Hi, I'm Casey Church, and this is Games on the Budget. This week's game might not look like much on the surface, but trust me, Faster Than Light is definitely worth a look if you're a fan of RTS games. In FTL, you command your own ship that just intercepted data from the Rebel fleet, and it's your job to deliver it to Federation HQ. The only problem is, is that several sectors away, and the Rebels are fast on your trail. On the way, you must battle Rebels, Pirates, and other dangers that will put your ship and her crew at risk. FTL's real-time gameplay style is what really puts it over. You really do feel like you're the captain of a ship under attack and that you have to make quick life and death decisions, even when you make those choices while the game is paused. Plus, the strategy goes beyond the battle, like trying to save up to buy new weapons, crew members, and ship upgrades when you need that money to buy ammo and fuel for your FTL drive. Faster Than Light is highly addicting, and despite its simple look, it's a fantastic real-time strategy game that will put you on the edge of your seat as you play. FTL is only 10 bucks and now available on Steam. This has been Games on the Budget. I'm Casey Church. Game on. I already know what you're thinking. What in the world is this? Believe it or not, this is considered to be the flagship title for the Sega Saturn back in the day. You might be thinking to yourself, it wasn't a Sonic game? Well, remember, Sonic R stunk, Sonic 3D Blast was a Genesis re-release, and Sonic Extreme was never finished. This was made by Sonic Team, however, and Nights in the Dreams has developed something of a cult following over the years, to the point where it recently got an HD re-release on Xbox Live, PSN, and PC. The basic story is two kids become trapped in a dream world by the nightmares. They soon discover a purple Jester-like character called Knight who you control by flying around, doing loop-de-loops, and flying through rings. The gameplay is very simple. Each level consists of four tracks where you fly around to collect orbs and blow up pods to help the kids overcome their nightmares and defeat the nightmare boss at the end. In case you can't tell, this game looks great. The HD graphics look absolutely stunning and are extremely colorful. Sega even included a playable Sega Saturn version of the game just so you can see how far we've come since 1996 and the music is amazing. If there is one downside, it's that as fun as the gameplay is, it hasn't really aged too well. Knights came out when 3D games were still in their infancy, and developers were still trying to find their potential. Plus, Super Mario 64 came out at the exact same time, and set the standard to how 3D games should play and control. Seeing how all you really do is fly around in this one, modern gamers might not see the true appeal or potential in Knights. Knights in the Dreams is a fun little game that looks, sounds, and plays great, and is cheap at only about 10 bucks. However, its outdated style of gameplay really makes this geared more towards fans only. As a result, we give the HD re-release of Sega's Knights in the Dreams 3.5 goofs out of 5. Well, I'd have to say it's pretty much the community, me, me and a bunch of my friends. We all, you know, we all graduated together and we all want to kind of stay connected. So we all really like to come in, play Call of Duty together, and getting at midnight, I mean, it's a lot of fun, especially because of the fact we get to stand out there in the freezing cold. I can't feel my fingers and just stand there and just wait for Call of Duty to come out and we all go home and just, you know, have no clue what happened the next morning and just have a lot of fun. I don't know if you had a chance to play Halo 4 yet, but uh, the control scheme is almost identical to Call of Duty now. Uh, what does it say about not just Halo, but the first-person shooter genre as a whole that so many games are mimicking uh, one series? Well, I mean, this can even go all the way back to uh, when Doom came out, you know. Doom came out, it became so popular that any game afterwards that was a first-person shooter would be instantly labeled a Doom clone. I think what, what it really go comes down to is just keeping the control style in a simple enough form that people can just pick up the game and can play. I love Halo, but they're trying to get a little bit closer and closer to Call of Duty as much as they can because they see what Call of Duty's doing is working. And I mean, you know, if it's not broken, I'm gonna fix it. 
Are you worried as a gamer that uh, it might go the way of Guitar Hero where so many games are so alike that it just completely eliminates a genre? I think if they continue in this style, it's most certainly going to get over flooded. If they at least put maybe another year space between the games, it should most definitely help it last longer. I mean, Black Ops is taking the bold step and in going into the future, but I mean, there's only so far into the future you can go without it being called a Halo clone because it, it'll it just seem so similar to Halo at face value. Shooters have been around since the very, very beginning, and they've only grown and grown and grown and grown. And no matter what happens, people are just going to enjoy shooting someone's head off. I mean, that's just, it's nature of the beast. Here of games on a budget. In today's world of downloadable content, microtransactions, and having to pay for full versions of games after you've already bought them, what happens when DLC goes too far? You get DLC Quest. In DLC Quest, you're off to save a princess in a 2D platformer where you'll actually be spending most of your time looking for coins to buy all the DLCs you'll need, not only to advance in the game, but for all the bare basic stuff as well. You want to be able to walk left? That'll be five bucks. You want your character to actually animate? That's another five. What, what, what's that? What's that? You want to pause the game? What's that? You want to be able to pause the game? That'll be ten bucks! Pay up, mother <laughs> In all seriousness, DLC Quest is a fun little game with some nice humor and strategy involved, as well as a nice, not-so-subtle commentary on how DLC and microtransactions are both helping and hurting the video game industry. At least the only real money you'll spend on DLC Quest is for the game itself. You can pick it up on Steam for just about $3. That's this week's Games on the Budget. I'm Casey Church. Game With the franchise hitting the quarter century mark not long ago, and after I finally played the awesomeness that is Ocarina of Time, I've really gotten into the Legend of Zelda series as of late. Nintendo must have heard about this because not only has the Wii U gotten a nice little price drop, they've also bundled it with an HD re-release of one of Link's newer adventures, The Wind Waker. At the risk of sounding like the reviews of the original game a decade ago, don't let the kiddie look at the cel shade graphics fool you. Wind Waker is not only one of Link's most daring adventures yet, but it's one of the most satisfying gaming experiences I've ever had. It kills me that I haven't played this game until now. <laughs> Years after Hyrule became flooded by the Great Sea, Link watches as his little sister gets kidnapped. It's up to him to set sail to the high seas to rescue her, stop the evil Ganon, and save the land of Hyrule for like the, you know, sixth time in a millennium according to the official timeline. Obviously, the main selling point here are the HD graphics. Not only has the cel shaded look aged perfectly over the last 10 years on its own, but this HD update just enhances it even further. This game looks beautiful, I mean absolutely stunning. However, the bloom effect at times washes out a lot of the bright and vibrant colors that the GameCube version was known for, and when Link is up close to a light source, it almost looks like he just popped out of a Gumby cartoon. The gameplay is largely unchanged in this version, and that's a good thing. With the exception of maybe adding the option of a faster sale and a few tweaks to one or two side quests, this is the same game you played on the GameCube. And with the inventory and map screens always at your disposal on the Wii U gamepad, the action never has to stop. In fact, you'll wonder how you ever played a Zelda game any other way. Wind Waker HD is pretty much the same as its SD counterpart, but it's the little things that make this version stand out. The updated graphics and sound are absolutely beautiful, the Wii U's gamepad functionality works really well, and the addition of Hero Mode is a nice touch for those who want the challenge. We give The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD a perfect 5 out of 5 goofs. Greetings comrades! Are you a fan of the Civilization series looking for a new experience while you wait for the new Civ 5 expansion? Or are you wanting to get into the turn-based strategy game but are worried it might be too complex? The state has the perfect thing for you! 
This is Sid Meier's Civilization Revolution. We stand at the beginning of a new age. Our people have forsaken the nomadic ways of their fathers and have settled in a city. They look to you to guide them into the uncertain future. The Civ series has been a PC staple for over 20 years, and a few years ago it made the leap to consoles with Civ Rev. Here, you'll pick your favorite historical leader or nation, Ah, Motherland! and build a civilization to stand the test of time, from the Stone Age to the Space Age. By interacting and trading with other nations, researching technologies to grow your cities bigger, and to build her armies to grow it stronger. But this is not like Risk, you won't win on military might alone. You can win a scientific victory by being the first to go to space, or a diplomatic victory by playing nice and having the other nations vote you in as leader of the UN. No two games are alike and there are many different ways to play. But there is one gameplay tip I can give. Never trust Gandhi. In just about every Civ game, once India learns how to split the atom, they'll threaten every nation with more bombs than North Korea. Because in Soviet civilization, Gandhi nukes you! Old school Civ fans will love the same attention to detail here that's in the PC games, and newbies and console gamers will both love the streamlined and easy to pick up and play style of the game. So whether you're new to turn-based games or a PC gamer looking to just pick up a controller for a while, Civ Rev is one you should definitely look into. Now you can reenact the Cold War the way it should have gone. My goodness, what have I done? I'm Keith Church and this was Games on the Budget. Rebuild the wall! Ugh, this game. If you don't know yet, I am a huge Sonic the Hedgehog fan, and the fact that Sonic 06 is not only one of the worst games I've ever played, but is the worst game I've ever played, hurts me. Hurts me deeply, and now it's my turn to hurt this game back. Wow, that's a pretty snazzy performance there. For those unaware, it's known as Sonic 06 because the official title shares the same name as the 1991 classic. Because this is exactly like this. I mean, I can't even tell the difference, can you? The controls are beyond broken. Sonic feels slower than molasses, and when the level does feel like letting them be the speedster that he is, the level design is set so A, you can never dodge anything in time, and B, cheap deaths everywhere. You can and will die at the very start of levels for no reason. What? Whoa! Oh, by the way, a killer whale chasing Sonic? Yeah, that's original Sega, thanks. Glitches are everywhere in this game. Clearly no one playtested this or else they would have seen how blatantly unfinished this game is. I mean, look at this! Look at it! How do you even get away with something like this? Okay, you be careful, Tails. The story features Sonic saving the princess from Dr. Eggman fresh off his Jenny Craig diet, while also being chased by Silver, a psychic hedgehog from the future with one of the most ridiculous character designs I've ever seen. And he's a cheap boss, too. Tang! It's no use! The game feels like it wants to be a JRPG, but it just doesn't work here. One good thing about the story, though, is it actually becomes self-aware and kills off Sonic to try to end the pain. Only to bring him back in the worst possible way. Sonic, come back. To me. To us. Excuse me one moment. Sonic 06 is so bad, I can't even give it a proper rating because our 1 to 5 scale doesn't have a zero. At least Sega hasn't released a Sonic game quite as bad since. Don't up, up, that's it. I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I'm out of here. Whoa! With all that money I saved on those games on the budget, I got me a PS4 and lots of games to go with it. And since we can't review everything in detail, here are some mini reviews of some PS4 launch titles, starting with Knack. Knack is capable of explosive growth. 
He will be invaluable in the fight against the goblins. Knack is a platformer beat-em-up where you play as a creation that can grow in size by collecting relics to fight robots and goblins. Think of this one as a mix between Crash Bandicoot, God of War, Katamari Damashi, and the LEGO games. This game's a lot of fun, but it's geared more for kids. Next is some sports games, starting with NBA 2K14. 2K knows how to present their sports titles. The TV presentation is top-notch and the game looks and plays great. Plus, any game that features Phil Collins in the main soundtrack has to be good. Madden NFL 25, yeah, football! Not much to say about this one other than EA's Ignite engine might actually be worth all the hype, but the 3D models of Jim Nance and Phil Simms are terrifying in next gen. FIFA 14, yeah, football! I've been having the most fun with this out of all the sports games. Great overall experience and a nice learning curve if you're new to the series. Killzone Shadowfall, this one is okay. It can show off what the PS4 can do and has neat features like the light bar on the controller flashing red if you take too much damage, but it's not going to win too many new fans over to the franchise. Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag Do what you want cause a pirate be free, you are a pirate! Call of Duty Ghosts Surprisingly, the single player campaign is really good. I like the setup and the story and a lot of the missions are very memorable. However, the multiplayer feels almost like an afterthought, which is weird cuz it's a Call of Duty game. Battlefield 4 on the other hand, amazing. While the single player is a bit lacking, the multiplayer makes this game. You'll hear our full review later on in the show, but just know this game might be the must have in the PS4's launch. There you have it, a full recap of everything PlayStation 4. That should keep me busy until the 22nd. That's right, not only did I have enough to get a PS4, but also a copy of Zelda, a Link Between Worlds. What? You thought I was getting an Xbox One? <laughs> I'm Casey Church. Game on. Greatness awaits. PlayStation.